Good morning. Grace and peace in the name of God, our Father, and Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to First United Methodist Church this morning. Uh, just as we gather for worship, a few things to note. Um, we have hit the month of September, and that means that there's many wonderful things um, going on that you need to make sure you are aware of. Uh, the first is, of course, uh, next Sunday is Rally Day, so that's uh, a Sunday where a lot of uh, many of our uh, year-long programs sort of ministry start back up and so that includes things like children's choirs and um, things like that Wesley kids um, uh, and also uh, we have a picnic every year for rally day and so that'll be next Sunday at six o'clock and that's for everybody that's not just for kids and youth and whatever that's that's for everybody to come and just be back together and enjoy uh, each other's fellowship as we begin um, begin many of those things again um, as we look ahead into September a um, couple of kind of fun things happening. Um, one is next Sunday where Jeff and I are starting a new series that we have been working on called The Gospel According to Heretics, um, which is going to be kind of fun. Um, the idea is that a lot of the ways that we learn about what, why it matters to believe certain things the way we believe them is you learn what's at stake by, get, by asking people who got it wrong. And so that's kind of the idea. So um, Jeff and I have been looking forward to, to talking about this. We think it's going to be fun. We hope that you will be here for it. Um, we also want to make sure we lift up um, later in the month, uh, on the 24th of September, go ahead and put this somewhere where you will remember it in your phone calendar or your wall calendar or wherever you put this stuff. Um, but um, this, eight, this year, 2023, is the 220th anniversary of our church existing. Um, you may, may or may or may not have known that. Um, and so we want to do a little bit of celebrating about that. You know, it's not quite as big of a milestone as 200 or 225, but it is 220, and so we're excited about it. And so one of the things we've done is on that Sunday, the 24th of September, we've planned a combined service in the sanctuary, um, and our bishop, Bishop uh, Sue, Sue Halpert Johnson, is coming to preach. And so um, we're looking forward to welcoming the bishop that day. We're planning on having some kind of reception afterwards. Um, but we hope that, <clears throat> that you'll plan on being here for that, to come and hear the bishop preach. Um, she's a new bishop. Um, she just started back in January. And so um, one, of the, one of the things I thought we needed to do was, was get her to come over to the western part of the conference and, uh, and visit in Salem. And so um, the night before, rest assured, I'll take her to Mac and Bob's the night before. So uh, that's, that's already on the plans uh, <clears throat> is to, to take her there. So, but please, um, please plan on being here on the 24th, because we're really looking forward to welcoming the bishop. Those are our announcements for this morning. There are many others in your announcement sheet and also available in our newsletter, but let's begin our worship service with prayer. Merciful God, we come before you this morning grateful that you have called us to this place. Lord, help us to meditate on, to contemplate, to struggle with what it means for us to follow you, to take up our cross, to follow you faithfully, to know that you have our best interest in mind, even when it is a challenge for us. Lord, help us to hear you, to speak to our hearts and to our minds this morning, to lead our spirits out into the world to serve you in the name of Jesus. Amen. We invite you to stand with us as we sing, I Can Only Imagine. Hallelujah. 
Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. I can only imagine when that day comes and I find myself. seated. The children come up. Good morning. The last of summer is over and now we start at September. Boo-hoo. No boo-hoo. <laughs> um, today, you know, last week we talked about Peter the Rock. Yeah, that was a good one. And that your faith has to be like a rock, a good foundation. Well, today we're going to talk about when you really, really follow Jesus and what he tells you. What we learn through our scripture and people telling us how to understand it. That we put him right in front of us and we follow what he says for us to do. Do you think that's hard to do? Like, when has it been hard to follow Jesus? Can you think of a time? Okay. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. It's not a Jeopardy question. It's just wondering. Well, there's a lot of times as you get older, it's going to be harder to put Jesus first. And not everything else, because it, it's easier to keep everything else first. Well, let me tell you today, Peter, who was such a hero last week, this week kind of messes up, like we all do. Because God, Jesus was telling them, we don't want to go to Jerusalem. Well, we want to go to Jerusalem. We're going there. But when I go there, we know what's going to happen. It was the last week of his life, and they had the Last Supper, and then what happens? Right, they take him up to the cross, and they kill him they crucify him but see jesus knew the whole time that this had to happen that's why he was sent there this has to happen he kept saying i have to do this because then on the third day he's raised from the dead and he shows us all that he brings us new life a way to heaven a way to be with god always 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 
But see, Peter could only see a tiny part of the picture. He could only see Jesus in front of him. And he thought, I don't want you to go to Jerusalem and get killed. We're not doing that. Nope, nope, you're not doing that, Jesus. And Jesus said, oh, get behind me, Satan. He called Peter the rock. He said, get behind me, Satan. Peter's just wonderful, right? What he was saying is, Peter, you're listening to your fears. You're listening to the Satan who's trying to tell you all the things that you shouldn't do when I'm telling you what you should do. This is what we have to do. Because we only see these little pieces and we go, Miss Church, I have no idea what this is going to make because we don't know what the big picture is. But we got to remember, Jesus knows the big picture. So if we put the puzzle and we're looking at that picture, it helps us to get it together. Peter didn't know the big picture. Instead, he was fighting Jesus all the way. I just don't want you to leave us. I love you, Jesus. And Jesus saying, sometimes you just have to trust me and follow me and do what I say, knowing I know the big picture and I know I will fit it all together when you don't understand it. And I can't tell you how many times in my life, old Miss Trish, that I saw that happen. I thought I knew the best way. I thought I had it right. And Jesus kept saying, nope, it's not going to go that way. And what he had planned was perfect. So got to learn to follow this, to follow Jesus, and don't listen to everybody else because sometimes they'll be like, poor Peter. They're going to be saying, I'm not doing that. That's the wrong thing to do. But Jesus knew it had to happen. He had to go to Jerusalem. Okay, did you get any of that? It's kind of a lot. That's a big, heavy lesson, even for Miss Trish. Well, let's pray, and then if you want to go up with me, we're going to do Bible Scholar to upstairs today, okay? Yeah, girls against the boys. Oh, Pat, and you're outnumbered. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to help you out. All right, let's pray. Dear God, help us to always follow you, for you know the big picture. Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Y'all are such good listeners. All right.
Good morning. Today's reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 21 through 28. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the Gospel. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told the disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning. The other day in Sunday school, we were talking about a number of issues, but the... Uh, issue came up about what it's like to drive in this part of the country in the American South. And usually, you know, if you come to a four-way stop around here, you're going to wave somebody on. They're going to wave you on. Sometimes you get into, you know, a little bit of a feud about who's going to be more gracious to the other one. <laughs> Neither of you moving, and everybody's waving like crazy. But you know, it's nice. It's nice when people are considerate, treat you nice. But of course, the unwritten rule is if you wave somebody on, they're supposed to they're supposed to wave back. They're supposed to thanks, you know, give you a little acknowledgement of what you of what you did for them. And of course, when they don't acknowledge what you did for them at least for me, it's irritating. I wouldn't have been nice to you if I had known you weren't grateful. I usually look at their license plate to see, you know, see if there's some reason. And usually there is some reason. It's like Pennsylvania or New York. <laughs> but you know, people do nice things, and, and you expect a little... Niceness in return. So Peter, he's concerned about this guy that he's with and who he loves and who he cares about. And so when Jesus says, when Jesus says that he's going to be killed, that he's going to be killed, Peter, out of Nothing apparently than concern says to Jesus, no, God forbid that would happen to you. Peter's being nice, saying the nice thing, expressing his concern for Jesus. 
And what does he get in return? Get behind me, Satan, says Jesus. You are a stumbling block to me. You're setting your mind on earthly things and not on God. Wow. You know, Jesus is kind of mean. It's just not a nice thing to say, especially to somebody who's expressed some concern about you. So what, 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 what's going on? What's, what's the deal, as we say all the time, what is the deal with Jesus? Well, last week, Alan preached on the passage that's immediately before this, which is the passage where Jesus asked the question, who do people say that I am? And, and Peter says, you're the Christ. You're the Messiah. You're the son of the living God. And Jesus says, exactly right. Good for you. But then, then Jesus says, and he says this a lot in the Gospels if, if, you, if you read them. He says it more in some Gospels than others. It's what, it's what William Vreda called in a very famous book in, in Christian theology, the Messianic Secret. Jesus says to them, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody about what happened. Don't tell anybody about what I said. Don't tell anybody about who I am. Don't tell anybody. And, and the question always arises, why does Jesus say that? Well, of course, one of the, one of the reasons is, is that he is opening up slowly who he is and what he is, and he's telling the disciples more and more about himself, but keeping that from the crowds, as they're called, who follow him around. But you see in the Gospels this increasing expansion of Jesus making the disciples aware of who he is and what he's about and what his ministry is and what his mission is and what his role is and what his future is. He reveals more and more to them. Well, as you know, the disciples become confused. They don't really comprehend what it is that Jesus is trying to say to them. They don't really comprehend what the point is. And they, and they begin to wonder. They begin to wonder about themselves. They begin to wonder about their own future. They begin to wonder about their, their own safety. They begin to wonder about Jesus and his future and his safety. They, they, they can't really understand what Jesus is about. And when Jesus says things like, I'm going to suffer and die and be killed, and on the third day rise, you can just hear in the background the disciples saying, what? What are you talking about? And, and, and they have this picture of who the Messiah is. They have a picture of who God's chosen one is. And that picture doesn't involve suffering and death. If anything, it involves the opposite. It involves kingship, true kingship. It involves political and social and religious power. It involves throwing the Romans out of Israel. It involves a restoration of what they would see to be the true Israel. It involves all sorts of things, but it doesn't involve a cross, and it doesn't involve death, and it doesn't involve all of these things that Jesus talks about. So it's no wonder that as we read the story, and as you and I get closer to the end of the story, it's no wonder that, you know, the disciples not only misunderstand, they actively misunderstand. From the betrayal of Jesus by Judas to Peter denying Jesus three times to other acts by the disciples where they ask, Who's going to sit on the right hand and the left hand of Jesus in glory? Who's going to be the chief of the disciples? 
over and over again, even though Jesus starts letting them in on who he is, their misunderstanding expands and gets bigger and more confused. So when Jesus says to Peter, you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Well, if there's any words that are true of us, those are the words. Our minds are always set on human things. Our daily life, I, I dare say, what you're thinking right now. I'm not uh, naive enough to believe that you don't think about other things during sermons. <laughs> you're thinking about lunch. You're thinking about the rest of the day. You're thinking about your week. You're thinking about the fact you might be a little bit sleepy. You're thinking about the fact that, you know, fill in the blank. All of us are, are constantly thinking about all sorts of stuff. But typically, we're not thinking about God. We're not thinking about God's call on our life, God's claim on our life. We're thinking about the concerns of the world, the concerns of regular life. Do I have enough money? Can I make some more? How's my retirement? How's my health? How are my kids? How's my husband or wife? What's that funny noise my car is making? <laughs> Fill in the blank. That's our life. Our life is this constant drumbeat of distractions and concerns about our own security, about our own life, about our relationships. That's where our minds are. We're not thinking about God, typically. Now, we might at special times and places like this we come to church and we sing and we hear sermons and listen to scripture and we pray and we, we, we receive this meal and we do all sorts of things. But it's this special set-aside time. And we go right back to our life even if we're not dealing with our life right now in our brains. Because as soon as I said lunch and the rest of the week and all that, I know that you started going, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. wait a minute, let me think about that for a minute. My daughter and her husband and my grandson are coming over to my house today for lunch. And I'm already thinking, eh, when will that end? I love my daughter, I love my grandson, I love my son-in-law, I'm, te I'm teasing in case you're watching Jennifer, I'm teasing. <laughs> you know, Henry Nowen, that, that, that spiritual writer who died a good number of years ago, but he said, our hands have to be empty and open for God to fill them. Our hands have to be empty and open. And we spend our lives with our hands clenched, filled with our stuff, not only possessions, but the stuff that we're concerned about, our thoughts, our concerns, our, you know, stuff. That's what our hands are filled with. And there's little room for God in our lives. So message number one of Jesus to you and me this morning is, 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 Set your mind on godly things. Set your mind on your faith. Set your mind on how is it that Jesus Christ claims you today. Set your mind on what you can do today to help push along the kingdom. And if not push the kingdom along, at least get out of the kingdom's way so that it can move forward. But number two, and the more troubling message for you and me, and the message we don't like, just like the disciples didn't like it, and just like Peter didn't like it, is this fundamental message of the gospel that the only way to life 
is through death. The only way to true life is for things to die, ultimately for Jesus to die. But that we need to be involved in putting to death those things in our lives that are not of God, those things that are in our lives that are separating us from God and from each other. Christian faith is, is very, very difficult. It's very strange. It's very odd. And there's no wonder that the disciples are always going, huh? What? Because it's not a message that we intuitively get. So when Jesus says, take up your cross and follow me, and if you want to try to save your life, guess what? You're going to lose it. But if you lose your life, for God's sake, you're going to find real life. That's not a message that resonates well with us. Take up your cross. You know, some crosses are, some crosses are forced upon us. So, some situations of life, a cross is handed to us that we have to bear. And it's not easy when, 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 when that happens. Some crosses we choose. We, we decide to take on a godly purpose and a godly mission in our life. But Jesus says, you know, that's what real life is. It's not grasping after some sort of self-concern, power, influence, the way the disciples thought that Jesus should be doing. It's all about self-sacrifice, giving up, surrendering, emptying ourselves, letting God take over. Letting God take over our hearts, let God take over our thoughts, let God take over our work. It doesn't profit us, says Jesus, it doesn't profit us if we gain everything in the world but we give up true life. There's no profit in that. There's no benefit to that. We've got to be able to surrender ourselves and give ourselves up and set ourselves aside so that God might be seen. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us continue to worship and praise God. As we continue in worship, uh, we take the first opportunity to, um, to spend some time in prayer uh, for folks who are on our hearts. You can see <clears throat> our prayer list here on the back of your, you got the announcement <laughs> sheet, you have it there. It also comes out each week in our weekly newsletter. Um, we hope that you'll spend time throughout the week, maybe looking at those names, maybe saying a prayer for them. Um, in particular, I want you to continue to lift up David Laughlin. I uh, remember he broke his leg. Uh, a few weeks ago and he's back at work but they're having to work with all the, the physical therapy and all that kind of stuff and he's not really able to be on it so we want to continue to pray for him continue to pray for Barry Neighbors um, as he continues to have his own uh, medical challenges are there others who are on our hearts this morning that we need to pray for that are not listed in our prayer prayer list Tom Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for sharing that. Any others? Let us pray. Merciful God, we come before you this morning. As Jeff said, many of us come bearing crosses that we did not choose for ourselves. And we pray that we would rely on you to help us to carry them. We pray that we would be here in this church, a community of people who would help one another in bearing those crosses. Lord, there are other crosses that we know.
know you are calling us to bear, that you are calling us to willingly take on as you did. That where we might prefer the path of least resistance, you are calling us to possible challenges, even perhaps suffering at times. All for the good of the work you are doing in the world and for those that we love, for those that you call us to love and our neighbor. We pray that in the midst of that, that you would give us courage, that you would give us your endurance for those times. Lord, most of all, we pray that we would have our hands out ready to receive. That just later in this service, as we hold our hands out ready to receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that it would nourish us in such a way that we would be sent forth in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others as we pray in that prayer. Have our hands out, Lord, ready to receive you and what you call us to do. We pray for those in our hearts, for those in our prayer list, for those we see in the world carrying your cross. We know that you know us better than we know ourselves, that you are in every situation, and that you are leading and guide us if we would only listen. We thank you for this church community, for all those who make it possible for us each week to gather together, for the work of staff and volunteers, for the generosity of our congregation, for the work of your spirit moving us to prepare for worship and to be here together. For all of this, we are thankful in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we continue in worship, we share in our tithes and offerings. The ushers will pass around the baskets. But of course, if you wish to give online, there will be information about that on the screen for you to be able to do that. However you do it, we are grateful and thankful for your generosity. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. I invite you to stand as you are able as we join together in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You heard the cry of your people in slavery. You hear our cries of pain as well. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. He knew that he must suffer and die for the sins of the world. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of the your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and loving sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit in us, gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood, that all people may rejoice in hope. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at the heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. And now, with the confidence of children of God, we are bold to pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all share in the same loaf. For the bread we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. You may be seated. Just a moment, the ushers will invite you forward. We invite you to come, just as Jeff said, with your hands out, open, ready to receive. We will receive a piece of bread. We invite you to take that bread and dip it into the cup. Uh, and as you uh, do that, uh, we uh, will have um, also have gluten-free wafers available for those who require that. Please uh, remember this, everyone who is here is welcome to come to the table. Come taste and see that the Lord is good. Praise. 
pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Let us rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, and have perseverance in prayer. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Would you please stand and sing with us as we close with our fly away.
Tech's victory yesterday. There's more good news for you. The chairs can stay where they are. So, <laughs> I, I, you know, it's always good. Go forth this day in peace. Serve God and your neighbor in everything that you do. Set your mind, set your mind on the things of God. Set yourself aside so that Jesus Christ might be seen in the world through you. Go forth in his name, Son, Father, and Holy Spirit. Amen.